Dude, this thing's just roaring drag. So today on July 18th, we got some striper action for you on the fly. We're gonna be showing you how we use the trolling motor to sit right in front of the reef and catch some fish. I'm just trolling up. Since we gotta go slow anyway, I might as well just troll up and see if I can find another area they're hanging out in. There's one. Do me a fair when you get that in, throw the trolling motor on. Try to camp this thing over here, see how it goes. There's one. That's what they were. Oh, these are smaller than yesterday. This trolling motor can't hold us. See if I can get this trolling motor to hold us here. All right, so watch what I'm doing. So you're okay. I'm just throwing it out there. Any slack line, just let it go. I'm just gonna let it swing. And then what you wanna do is just get your hand up here because you gotta make up the slack. So when you do feel them grab it, you gotta make up all the slack to set the hook. And then once it finishes its swing, there he is. That time I didn't even have to do it. And then as it finishes its swing, just bring it in, just to haul it in as fast as you can. Make it look like the bait's trying to get away from it. Another technique to catch stripers. We can need spot lock or an anchor. Broke the braid. Yeah, the knot probably gave out. You see that? I got that one on the swing. He's got me into the backing. Most of it's because of the current. It's not even that big of a fish. Got the line back. Pretty cool. Just get him, get him on the swing like that. Using the spot lock. And the best part is you don't have to listen to the engine. <laughs> Oh, 
That was a bad situation. Yeah, it was a little bigger than the last one. There's a nice breakup right behind the boat. Right behind the boat? Yeah. We're progressively getting bigger. First one's 17, next one 18, that one was almost 20. You want to use this and I'll rig that rod? Dude, this thing's just roaring drag. I can't stop it either. I don't want to let go of the spot lock because yesterday, after about six drifts through, we put them down. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the neck bringing all this fish in. Look at him, he's way back there. See him? I haven't got my fly line back yet. That's not cool. This is a bigger fish. Sorry, Bubba. I'll let you go here in a second. Twenty two now. Get an inch bigger every time. And the bait coming up behind the boat. I'm chasing the bait. That was cool. There you go. Yeah, they chase. You should have seen the ti its tiny little bait was like leaping out of the water trying to get away from the striper. This was not as big. They're not as that are not as healthy. I right, dropped them. Yeah, there's another one. That's what I thought. <laughs> I left it there on purpose because <laughs> I knew another one would grab it. Oh, this one's coming at me. Yeah, swim upstream. Where'd that dude go? Nah, no way that's 20. 18 and a half. Yeah, they're pretty much in this area on the reef. It's just yesterday we shut them off. We were doing well for about maybe an hour. I kept running over, up and up, over them. I think it put them down. Because we had foggy, you know, we had low light conditions. They should have stayed up. He took that on the swing. He hooked himself. I don't do anything. Yeah, that thing's down in his gills. All right, he should be okay. We'll see. I probably not gonna look. He's pretty bloody. Put some flavor on my fly. Next episode's a good one. We went to the Connecticut River to try to catch some fluke, which we did accomplish, but we also got some very big sea robins, and then we headed further up the river to catch some catfish. 
which we ended up keeping. So we will be doing a cooking video with those catfish. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.